Senator Elizabeth Warren is our guest. Let's go on the record. A force on hot button issues during the midterms and beyond. With a split Congress, can progressives still move the needle? The senator is here to make the case. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR. I'm Janet Wu, along with New Center 5 political reporter Sharman Segetti. Thanks for joining me. Senator Elizabeth Warren joins us at the table this morning. She's a Democrat, the state's senior senator in Washington, first taking office in 2013, a candidate for president in 2020, the special advisor to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau during the Obama administration. That seems so long ago. Yes. A law professor at Harvard and a resident of Cambridge. So nice to have you back with us, especially now this weekend with everything that's going on so in the world and as well as in Washington. So thank good. you for dropping by. Thank you and thank you for having me. It's good to see both of you here. Thanks for being here. So the Senate joined the House in voting to end a potential rail strike yeah. last week. How comfortable are you uh, with forcing some union workers to take a deal they don't really feel is in their best interest. Uh, well, I voted against it. Um, and look, but I understand the problem here. We don't want to shut down the economy, but we have to remember what's happened here. And that is that this industry fired a third of their workers. They have made billions of dollars in profits. They've done $125 billion in stock buybacks. They doubled their profit margin during the pandemic. And the way they've done that is they've said, we're going to use something called precision scheduling so that uh, uh, so that what happens is everybody's like a widget and on call 365 days a year. I don't think workers should be forced to work after they have a heart attack uh, or after they break a leg or face, if they stay off the job, losing, losing their jobs. So look, I think it's tough. The good news is we've averted the way at rail strike ready to go forward. Is there no other way forward? I think, I think the other part though is the issue is not gone. Um, I, along with uh, a lot of other senators, said we have to stay on this question about forcing people to work sick and injured, particularly when, you know, they're responsible for this large piece of dangerous equipment. And so we're going to keep pushing along with the Biden administration, which I know is very much committed to this, to getting some relief and to getting some sick leave time for these workers. But do you think the unions that have refused so far to join will actually change their minds with another 60 days of negotiations? Or do you think that this is just a waste of time and just getting over the holidays? I think the problem we've got is that uh, after the first of the year, we're going to have a Republican majority in the House and getting a deal through that is if they don't negotiate their deal, remember what happens. You've got to pass something through the House and the Senate in order to force the parties back. I worry about management. It's not unions. It's management that says, you know, we might, I'd like to roll the dice and see if we can get a better deal with the Republicans mm -hmm. in control of the House. So that's the importance of going ahead and resolving this right now, which by the way, I'll just make another connection. It's also the importance of raising the debt ceiling right now. We need to be aware of what's going to happen come January, because we're going to have a lot of Republicans in there who have one goal, not all of them, but many of them, one goal, and that is to get Donald Trump elected in 2024. And they are willing to cause chaos in the economy. They're willing to cause a lot of pain to American families. We need to put as many uh, uh, barricades against that right now while well, we still we're going to come back. We're going to come back to that uh, that subject right now. I want to ask you a little bit about big tech. Um, yeah. Sam Bankman Freed spent a lot of money courting members of Congress for years mm -hmm. before all of this happened. And now with his company FTX bankrupt, he claims that there was no fraud intended. Do you believe him? And how confident are you that the politics are now in line for federal regulation of crypto? So look. Uh, there are already legal tools, and it appears from press reports, one can't go beyond that, I have no inside information, but it appears from press reports that a lot of laws have been broken here. If that is the case, the SEC needs to enforce the rules, the FTC needs to enforce the rules, and the Department of Justice. And if someone's engaged in criminal activity, then it's time for an orange jumpsuit. But, but, it is also Congress's responsibility to step up here. It is important that our enforcers have the, the, the tools they need, and that means they gotta have enough money. They gotta have enough resources. They gotta be able to hire 
enough cops on the beat actually to monitor what's going on here and to prosecute wrongdoing. And Congress needs to step up in places where there's any ambiguity about whether or not our regulators have jurisdiction over the crypto world. We just need to make it clear in Congress that the same kind of transactions will be covered by the same kind of laws with a cop on the beat, whether it's crypto or credit cards or bank accounts. But do you believe that he was he didn't intend fraud when it he says that? It doesn't matter. Okay. Let's talk about Twitter. Sure. Uh, you've lost many followers over the past couple of weeks, as have many of your progressive colleagues. Uh, presumably, many of your progressive supporters are leaving the social media site. Will you? You know, I look at it this way. The problem we've got right now is that we know that someone is going to make the rules on Twitter and on these other sites for how millions of people around the world talk with each other. And right now, it's one guy off in a room by himself. And he decides, yes on you, no on you. Who knows what's going on? I think that's fundamentally wrong. What I believe we need is some structural change here. That's something I'm working on with a uh, Republican uh, co-sponsor. Yes, yeah, Senator Lindsey Graham, is that's that right? That's right, that's right. Because I think those rules ought to be made both public and out in the open and then enforced in a neutral way. So he's I just don't he, think one guy ought to have that kind of power. He's talking about a digital regulatory commission. So yeah. that's what you're looking that's for. What, what do you want on. it to do? Well, we're still working on all the details, but the idea is just to make sure we've got a level playing field. That's why Lindsay and I are working on this. It's a level playing field. We want to be able to make sure that rules are transparent to everyone and that it's not about trying to uh, advance one over another. It's about trying to make sure that in these digital spaces that it's fair. Part of it is about this. I'll give you another example, Amazon. You know, there, here's a company that both runs the platform, the marketplace, and at the same time, they compete by putting businesses in, and some are labeled Amazon and some are not. So they collect all this information from different folks and then they make these terrific business decisions you can't be both the umpire in the game, running the, the platform, and a player in the game at the same time. So that's another piece of what we're working Looking on. for gossip here. Is it challenging working with Senator Graham, or is it uh, easy? You know, it's always interesting to work with any of my Senate colleagues. It's an <laughs> unlikely pairing. It's an unlikely pairing. Unlikely. Um, so you touched on this a little bit earlier with only a few weeks left mm -hmm. with Democratic control of Congress. What's the top priority in these final weeks? Let's, what are the bills that you feel absolutely must get to Biden's desk before January 3rd? Okay, we need to do the debt ceiling because the Republicans have already said they're going to hold Social Security hostage. They are, literally, House Republicans have said and the price for passing, raising the debt ceiling is going to be to hurt Social Security, and they're going to potentially put Medicare at risk. We just can't do that. We also need to pass uh, the Electoral Count Act so that it doesn't do everything we need to do in voter protection, but it is a bipartisan bill that makes sure that some of the craziness that happened around the uh, just the official parts of getting things counted that led to uh, January 6th can't occur. We need to pass, we've got three tech bills already lined up uh, about apps and pricing, about making sure that there's a merger fee that goes into funding the FTC and the SEC. So we've got some pieces like that that we need to do right now. But I do want to say we did get um, respect for marriage all the way through this week. That we do a, that, we that, do a that was a, that was a big one. That was a big yeah. one. It certainly was. So with President Biden's student loan debt cancellation mm -hmm. plan now on hold, are you optimistic the Supreme Court will uphold the policy? Yes. The law in this is pretty clear. Uh, and any court that is following the law rather than playing politics is going to let this go through. But here's here's a slightly different point I want to make. And that is Look at the difference right now between Democrats and Republicans. Democrats are out there trying to pick up every tool they can to try to help people who have student loan debt. This is something I've worked on, as you know, for a long, long time. Republicans are out there saying, nope, they want to help the loan servicers make more money, the people who make money off this system. And I want to say a word about the changes just in the last two years. 
We've got President Biden announcing cancellation of debt. That's kind of the big headline one. But there's been so much more. I've been working with the Department of Education, and now we've got um, people who got cheated by the for-profit colleges are getting automatic forgiveness. People with permanent disabilities who have student loans are getting automatic forgiveness. Uh, uh, public service, uh, teachers and firefighters who were caught in this terrible scramble of a system have gotten their loans forgiven. Going forward, the income determined repayment plan is gonna completely change how people afford to pay for post high school education. And just last week, uh, new rules for people who are bankrupt, being able to deal with their student loan debt. So there's one big piece that everybody talks about, and that's great, and I, I, I obviously, I fought for this for a long time. But there's been a whole change in this system, and in two years, it's like taking this, this giant machine that has just been eating the bones of people who have student loan debt, and it's turned it around and actually put it on the side of the people who have to borrow money to go to school. Well, it's clear that uh, Elizabeth Warren is going to have a busy holiday season.